Uh, welcome to Tales from the Basement. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be your DM. My name is Nick Bira, and uh, this is a fifth edition D&D standard classic game here, mostly vanilla content, uh, but with some minor tweaks for storytelling purposes. Um, tonight, I'm joined with four players. Rob, can you please give an introduction about your character and who you are? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Rob. Intro for me first. I uh, volunteer and starting in the school year, work here at Orange Media Network as a TV producer. I am a third year chemistry student. And yeah, that's uh, all for me, really. Uh, my character is Aranus Meliam, a uh, level five wood elf ranger. And halfway through creating my character, I realized I basically made Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Hi, my name is Ashley. Um, I am a senior this year. Um, I'm also a producer here. I'm also music director. I do a lot of stuff. Anyways, my character is Solaris. Uh, she is a level five human sorcerer. You'll hear more about her later. It's cool. Hello, my name is Alexander Niebuhr. Uh, I am a fourth year computer science student. I volunteer uh, here at Orange Media Network a lot. Uh, and for today's game, I'm gonna be playing Clint, oh god, trying to get into the right voice. I'm gonna be playing the role of Clint Root Smasher, a uh, level five Drew Goliath. I'm Raina, I'm a second year biochemistry student. Uh, I don't work here, I guess. And um, I'll be playing Kel, the level five wood elf monk. I should have mentioned I'm a second year robotics grad student. I don't work here either. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so thanks for introducing yourselves and talking about your characters. Um, I'll set the scene here for you all. So this is, you all are on the continent of Kamuin in the heart of the Beer and Duel Empire. Today's adventure will be taking place. Beer and Duel. Okay. Yes. Today's adventure will be taking place in Frostford, a small trading city nestled in the pine forests of the Verdance at the base of the World Spine Mountains. Frostford is positioned on the shores of the Frostfall River and is a critical junction between the cities of Swarthmore, Thomderall, and Lutetia, the capital city of the Empire. Uh, Frostford is so named due to all the trading vessels and uh, caravans that cross the giant waterfall here and they transport goods and trade across the Frostfall waterfall, which is huge. Uh, Frostford is built on the ruins of another ancient city, and many of the buildings have a curious mixture of both old crumbling masonry that builds up the, the main foundation and structure of the base, and the newer, more modern brick construction on top of that. Uh, the local elected leader is Viscount Vicmorn Glory Jim, this dude, uh, a rich and influential dwarf who represents the interests of many of the locals. This is all information that all of you know, being in the Empire. And um, we'll start our adventure in a small, sort of dingy tavern called the Soggy Grindylo on the banks of the Frostford River below the waterfall in the lower half of Frostford. Um, you all are sitting, sitting, knowing about inside this tavern for your own various reasons for coming here. Mm -hmm. um, but with that, I'll hand it off to you to begin the game. So, Aranis, you said you were interested in getting some uh, chestnuts from me. Yeah, I could, I could, I could certainly go for a few chestnuts. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have about a couple sacks. Do you want like, let's say, like five silver or something like that? Yeah, that seems reasonable to me. All right. Trade. Yeah. Uh, all right. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm my pockets. Right so how are you doing today, sir? I have. A sack of chestnuts. <laughs> Is it two sacks or one sack? One. Two sacks. Two okay. sa oh, two? Two sacks of chestnuts. That's a good deal. Two sacks. I'm just a humble farmer. I'm just a humble farmer. It's, Minus five is a big deal. If only I weren't allergic to them. <laughs> <laughs> so do you overhear this conversation? Do you all uh, chip in or interject? <laughs> no, I'm just kind of sitting in the back corner. Okay. I'm trying to kind of stay in the shadows as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Don't really like I have no use for chestnuts. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> right. I don't know what to do with chestnuts. <laughs> I don't even know how to eat a chestnut. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you like, crack them open or something? I've never seen a chestnut. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> you farm them. them. How could you not know? <laughs> Listen, I have to sell them. People can use them however they sell want. Them. I think you roast them and yeah, crack them. Chestnuts anyway. roasted on an open fire. <laughs> 
Chestnuts are native to the uh, to the area and um, the pine forest. Are you sure you uh, you grew them if you don't know what they look like? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not steal them? You're a fraud, sir. <laughs> I'm just a humble farmer, I swear. How do you know this is true? Can I do an inside check to see if it's Yeah, helpful? sure. You just, you just uh, met. You saw his chestnuts in a bag, and you're very interested. You inquired about them. So please roll an inside check to see whether or not you believe his chestnut and story. Let me guess. I have to roll persuasion? Sure. All right. I got a 19. Oh, that's a five. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, no. You've never seen chestnuts before. And, and you look in there, and you see that these are these small spherical objects, but... You don't really know if they're actually chestnuts or not, so you can't really believe him on that. You'll get, uh, I'm just gonna go roast them over a fire real quick. Thanks, bud. Pleasure to admit, you. So you walk over to the near uh, nearby tavern fire in the in the hearth, and there's uh, a. Right, I, I take out I take out my cooking pot because I have one of those. Okay. Um, and I, I put the chestnuts in them, and I hold it over the fire to see what happens. Okay. You, you put him in there and you begin to wait uh, as the pot heats up. I want While to you're... up on him. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to roll stealth. Yeah, roll stealth and let's sneak up on him. Oh, I rolled a one. <laughs> you're, uh... Oh, ma'am, how are you doing? Can I interest you in some, part, in some probable chestnuts? Sure. Why are you cooking in a tavern? <laughs> it's a long question. and involved story. In short, I don't know what these are. I believe them to be chestnuts. I've never seen one, so I couldn't help. <laughs> this is unfortunate. Yeah. Can I interest you in one nonetheless? Please, no. <laughs> this seems reasonable. Can I pull out my torch and torch the chestnuts? <laughs> so you both are talking, and then the, the third member comes over and just there's a torch and lights on the fire and like helps I just heat hold, the sides. I just, I just heat the chestnuts with my torch. <laughs> I feel like this is a redundant <laughs> step, as I am holding the chestnuts over fire Your fire already. isn't strong enough. Oh. Oh, let me help you. You gotta even roast, even roast. Nice, you need, nice you need from roast. the top and the bottom. Meanwhile, even roast. Clint's just watching this happen, just <laughs> chuckling to himself. Just praying that something doesn't go horribly wrong and they are actually chestnuts. Because, so, you know, you don't seem to know. <laughs> you all are standing there doing this, and a, a fourth person walks up next to you and is standing, looking over your shoulder. It's this kind of uh, hunchbacked, like, hair combed over, um, sallow-faced, uh, middle-aged man. Uh, he's, he's Benjamin Meadmaker. He's the local tavern owner, and he's, like, oh. looking over your shoulders, watching you all intensely try to cook these odd, strange objects in his fireplace. And he's like, what are you all doing down there? Oh, sir, do you by chance know what chestnuts are? <laughs> Uh, and we believe no. these might be them? We, we have hazelnuts. I've, I've had hazelnuts. They're pretty good, but chestnuts? Those are new to me. Wow. Are these hazelnuts? <laughs> he reaches in, he takes one out, and he like sniffs it and tries to like chew on it, but they're like, uncracked <laughs> chestnuts, so he just chomps into it, and he's like, no, I don't, I don't know what they are, but they're not hazelnuts. Mm. Mm. So you might be telling the truth. <laughs> Maybe. Excuse me, Solaris, would you hold this pot? Or, ma'am, would you hold this pot yeah, for yeah. a moment? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. He turns around and he's like, anyone, please, can someone clarify what these are? Are these, are these hazelnuts or chestnuts? I sold them to him. I said they were chestnuts. They're chestnuts, I swear. Uh, I don't find this oh. man convincing. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, can you perhaps attempt to convince us a bit more effectively? <laughs> Should I roll an intelligence check? Check just to make sure that I am aware of that. Yeah, that you're sane and these are actually <laughs> chestnuts and not, not something just else. Rocks. Okay, so that's 11 uh, minus 1. <laughs> ten. So that's 10. <laughs> yeah, you, you, they're chestnuts. Yeah, they're uh, chestnuts. You've yeah. seen, you've picked a lot of these in your day. Um, you're not really from this particular I'm region, so they're all baffled by it, but uh, not you. Yeah. No, I mean, looks like you're doing it right. Just keep working on it. All right. It'll work. It'll be tasty. Something going to happen anytime soon, though. They aren't going to pop, that's for sure. Mm. So it's you're about just a solid half hour of roasting before they really, you know, get that chestnut flavor. Okay. I feel like your arms are But if they're already chestnuts, yeah. they should, you know, taste like chestnuts, right? Well, we, none of us know what chestnuts taste like. <laughs> I mean, he does. He sold <laughs> right. Maybe. Maybe. You, know this. <laughs> <laughs> you were just a humble chestnut farmer. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden. <laughs> Well, ben Benjamin Meanmaker, he says, uh, that's very interesting. I, I might want to buy some of those from you if you got any more. We'll talk later. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, uh, while you're working on that, is there anything I can help you all with? I've, I've got some meat on tap. I've got uh, some, some basic food. I've got a roast 
partridge in the oven of anything you guys are interested in? Get me sloshed. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have we have mead, two depths of mead, honey, and um, not honey, but it's, it's not honey. Yeah, it's just a special it's, brew, but it, it's yeah. uh, it's pretty good. Okay. It has high content. Yeah, give me give me one of them. Uh, okay, and he goes yeah. back and he brings out a large tankard of this foaming liquid, and he's like, "This is the honey one." He puts it down in front of you. That'll be a gold, please. Thank you. He takes Can the I gold one from of those you. Two? Sure, why not? He comes out with the other one, hands it to you as well. You said honey. What was the other one? Not honey. And not honey. Is it yeah. perhaps chestnut flavored? Uh, no, it's <laughs> it's uh, nothing flavored, but it's highly alcoholic. You know what? If you would bring me a, a glass of that, I might try and mix some of these chestnuts in. Okay. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, Maybe grind them up first. I feel a little offended you wouldn't just try it first, but I mean, I'll. I'll I mean, I'll, I'll do that, sir. Okay. Okay. And he brings out two like tall glasses, like this clear liquid, and he just kind of hands it over to both of you. All right. I'll just have some regular food and some water. Oh, okay. No. No. Uh, not honey mead for you. Okay. And then he brings out um, a small chicken leg, it looks like a chicken leg, on a platter and a yes. glass of water. It's a human. The water is a little cloudy, but it uh, seems passable. All right. Takes it takes it. a gold from all of you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did, so he brought me two things of mead, so I gave him two gold? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Red. So what are you all doing in these parts? I'm roasting chestnuts. I can see that. <laughs> I'm selling chestnuts. <laughs> I'm just passing through. I'm just enjoying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's my turn. <laughs> She's just living her best life. Yeah. <laughs> People watching. Well, that's interesting. You, you said you're passing through. Where'd you come from? The the western road or the south? I think the <clears throat> south. Okay. Well, it's uh, it's pretty, pretty uh. Did you run into any trouble on the roads by chance? Not that I, I didn't run into any, but. I also, came from, I also came from the south, and I didn't see anything either. That's good. I think I think the most of the trouble is on the western roads these days. Um, there's been a lot of bandits sort of hitting the caravans as they make their way from, from Lutetia to the west here to, to Frostford. Um, we've been looking for some help with that, but uh, the local law enforcement's useless. They can't seem to take care of it themselves. Huh. They keep evading <laughs> capture, I guess. Is that impacting your supply at all? For me, only a little bit. I don't trade as much. I do most of my stuff in-house, but um, we do have... It's just generally a, a nuisance for the town? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, you know, we have the, the waterborne trade, and we also have the land trade, and the caravans come by, by land on the roads, and they just get kind of besieged by these robbers and general narrative wells on the roads. Um, yeah, so that's one issue we've got. Um, oh, I will gladly help with this issue. In oh. any way that I can, just, you know, am I going out, beating them up? What, what exactly do you need for, for me to do in order to help? Well, that's very generous of you, sir. Um, we, we don't really have a way to, to fix it. We don't really know how to catch them necessarily. We've tried a couple of times in the local law enforcement, like I said, useless. But uh, we're, we're trying to our best. Um, I don't know, maybe you could um, ask around. Maybe talk to talk to the Viscount, get his opinion, see if he could maybe rig up something, give you guys some supplies. I don't know. Maybe just go on out there and knock around in the woods off the off the main trail and see if you find anything. Well, then I take a glass of mead, down it. <laughs> we'll okay. absolutely go and do that. Take another glass of mead, down it. First thing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you sure you're okay to do that? <laughs> yeah. Mm. It is late evening at this point. <laughs> in in the meantime. Is there a room I could rent? <laughs> He's like a little impressed and confused by the, the sudden uh, enthusiasm for helping him as well as the uh, drinking. And he, <laughs> he nods his head. He's like, yeah, I got a room. It's, uh, it's upstairs down the hall um, for one night, one person. Yes, please. OK, roll a constitution check, please. I was waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, Kel is just. 12 and constitution I have plus two. OK. Uh, you're, you're feeling a little bit, but it's not overwhelming. You're, you've, you know how to take your mead. So, um, wonderful. I think I'll also take a room as well. <clears throat> I will as well. I'm nice. just going to sleep outside. Okay. Ooh. Uh, we have some nice um, barn on the side here for some of I'll the, the cattle. Room. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, <laughs> and so you, go, you all go to your rooms? It? it was about 15 gold for a stay in the, the end. It's a 15? fairly... 15 gold, yes. Well, more than one I had. But yes, sure. that's fine. <laughs> Good. It's fine. We'll say you had enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, a little expensive here. The this is a trade city, and they mm -hmm. have really wealthy people that come through often, so they're they tend to charge pretty the high. The barn's for not looking so bad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it really isn't. I might actually go out there. <laughs> 
That's what's up. So, you all go to a retired your rooms for the evening? Mm. Hearing how much it was, actually, Kel's gonna join Solaris <laughs> What up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you just like kind of like avoid his look and just sneak out uh, as yeah. well. Both of you make your way to the cattle barn. Uh, it's a small uh, alcove on the side of the, the inn, right on the edge of the river, and you can hear the water rushing past. It's kind of muddy. There's quite a few farm animals in there, mostly some cattle uh, that go out to pasture in the woods, and then uh, various horses and mules that carry the, the caravans up and back from the main cities. Um, but you nestle in between a, a nice happy heifer, and you guys sleep pretty well. Um, I don't sleep. Okay, you don't sleep. I do. <laughs> yeah. Please don't rob me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. Maybe. Okay. Probably. That's a little bit too small for me, but eh. Being so, eight foot and all. <laughs> right. Yeah, your feet hang off about a solid three feet off the end of it. <laughs> your feet, your calves. Yeah. You just you bend just, up the knees and just sit just on the You just fetal yeah. position. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I've gotten used to it. I fall in bed and pass out. Okay. You are quickly lulled to sleep by the, the alcohol and the, the sound of the waterfall uh, nearby kind of rustling past. Okay, so you sleep through the night, uh, wake up feeling refreshed and slightly hungover, uh, and go about your business. Um, you all go down to the, the tavern in the morning and uh, eat breakfast, I assume. Um, yeah, naturally. Which is another goal for, for food. Uh, after you do so, uh, the, as you're eating your breakfast, these two doors burst in through the front door kind of clattering, wearing um, very dirty clothing. They're both covered in mud from head to toe. And they're like, they seem to like um, just finish each other's sentences. They're, they're like very much in sync with each other. And so they kind of rush to the, the bar and they're like, Ben, Ben, you'll never guess what happened, talking to the, the innkeeper. He's like, Og, what's up? And uh, Og, who you assume to be the, the dwarf on the right, uh, turns to the other dwarf. Um, he said, Gundan, you tell him. Uh, Gundan speaks up and he says, oh, it's, it's horrifying. There are these monsters in the mines. Uh, Og, Og then continues on. He's like, yeah, there were dozens of them. They just kind of came out of nowhere. We were digging a hole, as we do, you know, because we dig holes. Bee miners. Um, yep. And, uh, and all of a sudden, there was just people, all these people climbing up out of the hole and trying to pull us in. It was horrifying. We ran away as fast as we could and closed the door behind us. But uh, we, we closed off the mine. What do we, got to, what do, we do? How do we fix this? Uh, ben is like, that's, that's horrible. That sounds atrocious. Um, some kind of dark magic. Uh, I don't really know what to do with that. You should take it up with the Viscount. And they're like, yes, you're probably right. Uh, we just didn't want to climb all the way up the stairs first, but <laughs> you're right. So they, they get up and they turn around and begin to leave, apparently, to go off to climb the stairs and talk to the Viscount about this issue. Well, that sure was interesting. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This place is seeing a lot of activity recently, apparently. Yeah. Want to go check it out? Sure, why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've sold my wares. I'm good to do whatever for a bit. Can I do an insight check to see if I have any idea what they're talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Ten. Mm, let's get like a plus eight. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a plus zero. Nope. You got no idea. None at all. Wonderful. <laughs> so, you all take a step out of the inn and begin to go where? Uh, towards probably the Viscount's okay. house. So ahead of you, you make your way down to downtown uh, Frostboard. So down here on the lower level of the, of the town, you've got lots of small buildings and, and uh, various houses, but also a lot of shops and businesses. Um, off to the right, you see these large set of uh, stone stairs that go up alongside the waterfall that make their way up to the second tier and like the higher part of town. Um, you see Og and Gundan just clearing the top of it now, kind of panting heavily in the distance, and they turn and kind of go up to the very tip top of this cliffside, which is where Viscount's Keep is, is located. So do you make your way up to that direction? We do. Just yeah. follow behind. Okay. Uh, you make your way along the side of the river on this little, um, it's like a paved walkway that kind of, you know, 10 feet up above the river, and, and then over on the right, you see the river rushing past. As you're going, actually, you see um, a pair of uh, people in, in dark clothing kind of leaning up against a, a sewer entrance, or exit, I should say. And there's like two, two shady looking individuals kind of leaning up against the wall, the entryway, looking at each other and talking in hushed voices as you just walk past. You also see people um, all around you um, going about their business in the early morning, trading and, and selling their wares and trying to uh, just do what they do in the, in the town. Would it be possible for me to like see if I could hear anything of their brief <clears throat> while we were in range of those uh, individuals, those like shady individuals, like any chance I could like do a perception yeah, check? Yeah, go for that. All right. 
That is a 13. I also. Perception. Plus two, so that's 15. Okay. The second roll of the night is also a one. <laughs> oh no! So you, you totally missed that they're even there. Uh, yeah. you, you, you're walking past, and with the rushing of the water and the, the movement of all the people around you, you barely pick up hardly anything. You just hear like, you just hear a couple, a couple words like, shipment tonight, and just like, and then quiet. Right. Um, and that's about it. And then you continue on your way. Mm. Uh, you climb the, the stairs, the very long, there's hundreds of them, it's kind of arduous, and it's a little bit slick because of all the spray from the waterfall as you walk up. It's kind of deafening as you go up it. Um, when you get to the top, you see um, a bunch of ships actually moored at the top part of the waterfall, all tied down at the, the docks. This is where ships from the north come down and offload all their goods to be put onto ships below the waterfall and continue on the way. Um, you keep going, making your way past the artisan's district where all the uh, well-established uh, guilds and, and trade is done, and then you make your way all the way up to the Viscount's um, keep, which is on the very tip top of the, the hillside. Uh, ahead of you, you see Og and Gundin uh, in the middle of a line that sort of made itself at the front door. It's this, this stone keep with a large wooden door. You have two, uh, two individuals wearing light blue robes and, and holding um, like spears in their hands, and they're standing left and right of the door, and they're sort of letting people in one by one as they uh, as their turn comes up. How far back are they in the line? They're about third in line. There's about five or six people in, in line. Should we just go up and inquire? Should we approach the dwarves, or should we get in line ourselves? Let's know. have some. Let's have two of us go to the dwarves, and two of us go to the, into the line. Seems reasonable to me. I mean, I don't know. Perhaps uh, it's efficient, I guess. I walk towards the dwarves and accept and expect someone to follow behind me. Follow you. All right. Okay. So you both walk up. You two get in line. The other two, you walk up to where the dwarves are, and they're both standing there, looking visibly shaken and visibly covered in mud. And um, they uh, notice you approaching, and they're just like looking at each other and looking at you, just kind of awkwardly, like, "Why are they staring at us and walking towards us at this point?" Excuse me. Are are you the dwarves who were you know just in um, the soggy Grindelau earlier? They look at each other and they're like, yes, in unison at the same time. All right. Do you know anything about chestnuts? Ch chestnuts? And they look at each other. <laughs> uh, and they, they, Og says to Gundam, he's like, I've never had any chestnuts. I've had some hazelnuts. That was pretty good. Um, Gundam's like, I think I had a chestnut, chestnut once. I think, I think I did, yeah. Yeah, some guy from out of town brought him in. I had him once. <laughs> is, this, right. is this what they look like? <laughs> what? Is this, is this what they look like? Pulls out one of your oh, chestnuts. Yes. And them, uh, them oh, by the way, you, you forgot them on the fire after you oh, got your drinks and oh. they roasted to a crisp. They've just been like, incinerated. So, so we went through all <laughs> of that. I only have one sack there. I have two sacks. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you he's two. Extra. Is, this, is that a chestnut? Uh, Gundan takes it and he's like, I think so. What, who are you? Why do you need this? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so. Do you want to, how about, how about, let's, let's offer him the chestnut <laughs> in exchange for information. It's a good this, this is besides the point. So you, you were, you were describing something in the mines to Ben earlier. What, what was you going on with that? You can keep that oh. chestnut if you let us know. <laughs> we have more where that came from. He's like, no, no, it's, it's all right. Take it back, please. He takes it. He's like, yeah, we were, we, we own the mine down underneath the, underneath the cliffside and we've been mining some metals for quite some time, but the other day we were opening a new mine shaft and I guess we just kept digging and all of a sudden there was something on the other side and it kind of pushed its way through and all of a sudden there were these creatures all around us. It was horrifying. We had to run away for our lives. Can you describe them? You know, size? So were they slow? Yeah, size, I shape, know. speed. Ran away? They, I mean, they were slower than we were running for our lives, but they, were, uh, they weren't slow, I wouldn't say. They were just average. Okay. Um, but they were human-shaped. Uh, Shades. I, I grabbed one of them and pulled, and it felt like his arm came off of my hand, and I kind of threw it back at him and ran away, mm. um, trying to, to push him off of me. They didn't. They didn't look very healthy, um, whatever they were. Yeah, I mean they were in a mine. What do you expect, really? Mm. I mean we work in a mine, but, yes, but they keep... were buried in a mine. Right, exactly. <laughs> they they were in the mountain, whatever that means. Hmm. Are you um, sure you don't want the chestnut? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. uh, why? What's it to you? Well, I mean, I'm just we're st we're stopping I'm, through. I'm an individual who, when I hear people in trouble, I feel a sort of compulsion to help them as best as, as best I can. Well, that's a very noble pursuit. Uh, if you're willing to go in there and clear those things out, we'd be very grateful. 
absolutely willing to do this. What do I get out of it? We'll talk later. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. Uh, okay. Well, that's great. I mean, about this. we can we can certainly talk about some kind of reward if you guys can manage to do that. But uh, we're not going back there for a while. We got to talk to the Viscount. At this point, they've reached the front of the door, and the, mm -hmm. the guards are ushering for them to go in. They're like, "Well, we'll talk to you guys later. We got to go report this." And they both go inside. Very well. All right, we, we, we flag you two down. We, we regroup. So what happened? It's All right. chilly. So it sounds as though some creatures just sort of emerged from the mountain, and we've agreed to clear them out. You two? Yes, we have agreed. And we'd like it if you came along. What do I get from Roll the for persuasion. <laughs> sure. Fifteen insights. Thirteen insights. I'll also roll for persuasion. Seventeen. Plus I two. I match here. on you. Here you go. Yeah, but I have persuasion. Plus, I have oh, plus two 11. to persuasion, so I'm at seventeen. Good. Um, good. I match seventeen. I would say it's you know it's sort of up to you guys to debate. It's pretty much evenly matched across the board. I'm gonna think These about I mean if I, I need to take care of the crops added, back right? home real yes. quick. <laughs> That's Mine's 18. 11 plus four. I got 15 yeah, I think for persuasion. Okay. I got Props 15. are fine. I, I think I can spend a couple more days here before I have to head back. I, mean, I have nothing better to do. I have nothing better to do as long as I get some form of compensation for it. That is to be expected. We have chestnuts. <laughs> have I have chestnuts. plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> See, are they chestnuts? Did you figure that out? Chestnuts. They seem to be chestnuts. One of, one of them may have seen a chestnut at some point. He did believe them to be chestnuts. I'll take his, I'll take his word for it, I guess. It's a realness. Does that into your credibility, good sir? By the way, uh, what was your name? I'm not sure I ever caught it. My name is Clint Root Smasher. Clint! Do you smash roots? It's a tribal name. It's from back when I was wandering with the herd. Got knocked off to the side and uh, was told to be a farmer. So, here I am, farmer. That's as far as we need to go into that. Uh, I'm Aaronis Oakenheel. My friends just call me Aaron. Aaron, all right. Can I call you that? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Thank you so much for that. Is that name just so difficult to pronounce? I'm sorry. I've been told. <laughs> and I'm Kel, it's nice to meet you. And this is Twitch. <laughs> oh my, that's just adorable. Hello, Hello Twitch. My hair. It's a little mouse. <laughs> and you? I don't tell people my name. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you, it's don't, you, know, you don't need to know. My history is a mystery. Solaris. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful to meet you as well. Looking you too. Your stone. Should we not only get out? <laughs> yeah. Slightly so morbid point, there, Kel. At this point, you've reached the front of the line and they beckon you in as well. Uh, you all go in. What is the line Do for? To see the Viscount. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, weren't we going to go in to speak to him about the bandits? I'm not sure why we were going in, frankly. We can, we can I just inquire. wanted to be a part of the group. I just liked the line. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it and I was like, ooh, can't turn up a good line. Waiting in lines, it's a, it's a pass. It's a lifestyle more than a hobby. <laughs> I think we can, just like to feel I think we can pass on the line today and just start looking at that mine. Okay. We're at the front of the line already. We may as well go oh, in. Yeah, they're they're right. gesturing you in. So, okay, right. <laughs> you walk in. Uh, inside is, uh, it's very well uh, furnished. It's kind of ornate. It's this long entryway with like a red velvet carpet. And you see various rooms branching off from the main hallway. Um, you go through all the way to the end of the hallway and you see the, uh, the main um, meeting chamber. There's this large crescent shaped table and around it are various uh, people representing trade units and groups of people from the nearby uh, areas all kind of talking and, and gesturing over matters of the, the city. Uh, the Viscount, uh, Viscount Vicmore and Glory Jim is sitting at the head of the table and he's just sort of, he's the one in charge of all this and he's been kind of listening to everyone at the same time, but he turns towards you all as you walk in his group and says, uh, nods at you all in sort of like a nonverbal affirmation of, he sees you, what do you want? We were told there's been some bandit activity out on the western roads. So I was Wondering if we might volunteer to help out with that at some point. Volunteer? Did you guys see the, the bounty? Or did you hear about that from someone else? Heard about it from the tavern. What is this about a bounty? Yeah, well, we've had a bounty out for the tree rats for some time. Those uh, a gang of despicable scum that kind of run around <laughs> and 
generally are unhelpful. Um, they like to take my stuff, and I don't really appreciate that. So, uh, yeah, if you're willing to bring me back some tree rat scalps or whatever else you might have as proof that you did it, I'd be very, very uh, happy about that. I'd be willing to pay you. How much are we talking? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it depends on how many how many you bring back, or at least proof that you've gotten rid of them. Um, that are alive, it's up to you. Um, but I'm looking for about, I'm willing to give about 20, no, that's too little. About 30 gold uh, per per uh, proof of, of success. Okay. I'd be willing to help out for that much. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'll what I your like offer. Gold. Cool. Uh, is it all you need? Or, I mean, I'll, I won't give it to you when you come back with proof yes, until then you're on your own. The, uh, the two dwarves who were just in, they have relayed the situation in the mines to you? Yes, that is very confusing and troublesome. I, uh, I've submitted it to my head of police and hopefully they'll take a look into it soon. Very well. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. No problem. He just kind of dismisses you with a wave and goes back to talking to the guy next to him. Mm. So you all head back out. <laughs> yep. Just scurry out. So now you're currently back at the top of the, the city uh, and at the keep you have multiple paths you could go to at this point. Uh, what do you choose to do at this point in time? Well, my chef's towards the entrance of the town, so we could just take a peek in or we could just head out towards those bandits. Just deal with the bandits first. Yeah. Law enforcement. The law enforcement here may be largely ineffective, but who knows? They may do something effective in the mine shaft first. Well, the mine shaft has had more activity more recently. Perhaps. Yeah. Might have. Yeah, but money. That is a good point. Hmm. About the gold. I'm just afraid that when we come back here, there won't be that much of a town left if there's some super sinister going on down there. That's my only concern. I, I do agree with that concern, especially since the bandits have been a long-term issue. That might have a bit more time, less of a time crunch on it. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Flip a coin? Sure. Roll a dice. I'll roll a d4. Evens are, uh... I also just have a even. coin. Oh, you do? Yeah. Sure. Perfect. Head's mine. <laughs> All right, what's yours again? No, heads, head is the mine. mine. Oh, heads of mine. <laughs> <laughs> heads. All right. Go to the mine shaft. Okay. To the mines. So you all pack up and make your way back to the uh, the through the main part of town, going down as you as you go, looking at the surroundings. Um, the the men you saw at the sewer entrance are no longer there. Um, you continue on and you make your way down back past the soggy granny low, and now past the bridge, which is the main entry point over the river into Frostburg. Uh, you keep going, you pass a few more um, residential areas and begin to get outside of town. Um, it transitions from kind of hustle and bustle to much less um, activity here. No one's really around, no one's standing around. Ahead of you, you see in the distance uh, the graveyard uh, for Frostburg that's kind of small and off to the side of the base of the, the side of the mountain. And then when you uh, get there, you do see the mine shaft off away from the graveyard, built into the side of that cliff face. Um, and it goes, it's dark, and it just goes straight into the wall.